Welcome back to Civil Wars. I'm William Spaniel, and this is the first of two lectures on the Revelation Principle. The Revelation Principle tells us that if an outcome of a game is the result of optimal play, then an incentive-compatible direct mechanism exists. And a direct mechanism is simply one that duplicates the outcome of the game with optimal play. I'm going to first explain to you what's going on here visually, and then reinterpret this in words. So visually, we've seen this diagram in the past. We've agreed that the outcome of a game is a function of the strategic play of a game. And the strategic play of a game is going to be a function of the game being played. Well, the revelation principle tells us that we can think of the outcome of a game as implicitly a function of the game being played. So we can cut out this middleman, not think so much about the strategic play of the game, but just think about how games that are being played directly map onto outcomes. So in words, rather than play the game, the actors could tell the game master their private information, say, hey, I'm the weak type, or hey, I'm the strong type, or hey, I'm a medium type, something like that but tell the game master honestly what's going on in their heads. And then the game master can simulate the game based off of that information about what the players are actually, what their real type is, and then assign payoffs based on what would have happened had the players actually played the game for themselves. And the reason here that the players are willing to tell the truth is because the game master is going to do all of the bluffing for them. So the game master is going to understand, based off of the fact that the players are going to tell the game master their private information, the game master therefore knows exactly what's going on in these players' heads, the game master can then think about what the strategic play of the game would have been, and then think about the outcomes of the game based off of what that strategic play would have been, and then just give those outcomes directly to the players. So rather than going through and playing the game, the game master just essentially simulates the game for himself, and then pays off the players accordingly based off of what would have happened had the players played the game for themselves. And again, this is incentive compatible here because the players are going to be getting exactly what they would have been getting had they played the game thoroughly for themselves, and the game master is going to replicate any sort of bluffing behavior that a weak type might have wanted to have committed to when they played the game. So I think it's best to understand what's going on here in terms of the revelation principle by looking at an example and something that we're actually very familiar with. So think back to the game with incomplete information uh, in crisis bargaining, where a rebel group was negotiating with the government and the government was making an offer to the rebel group, which the rebel group could accept or reject. And the government doesn't know whether the rebel group is strong and will win a war with probability PR prime, or the rebel group is weak and will win the war with only probability PR, where again, PR prime is greater than PR. What we saw in that setup is if the probability that the rebel group is weak is sufficiently high, then the government is going to offer PR minus CR. That's the war payoff for the weak type, right? Because we have PR being the probability that the weak type wins the war, and then CR being the rebel group's cost to fight the war. So that amount, PR minus CR, is just enough to convince the weak type to accept, and the weak type will accept, but it's not enough for the strong type to accept, because the strong type, if it fights a war, gets a payoff of PR prime minus CR, which is greater than PR minus CR, because PR prime is greater than PR. So the strong type rejects under those circumstances. Now that is what happens when the players play this game strategically and optimally. Those are the outcomes of the game. And the revelation principle says that rather than go through this game, we could just have the types of the rebel group, the weak type and the strong type, tell the game master whether the weak type is weak or the strong type is strong, and then the game master can just assign payoffs based off of that. And everyone is going to be perfectly happy telling the truth. So what's going on here? What is that incentive-compatible direct mechanism? Well, again, the rebel group tells the game master its strength, whether it's weak or it's strong. And then based off of that information, the game master is going to assign payoffs. The government doesn't have to tell the game master anything because the government doesn't have multiple types. It is just a single type, so the government doesn't have to think about what it's going to tell the game master because there's only one thing to tell that game master. 
And in turn, the game master is only going to be assigning outcomes based off of what information the rebel group tells it. So if the rebel group tells the game master that the rebel group is weak, then the game master is going to divide the good at PR minus CR for the rebel group and the remainder, 1 minus PR plus CR, for the government. And if the rebel group tells the game master that it's strong, then the game master is going to start a war. So think about what this compares to the previous slide. In the previous slide, if you were weak, then we would have the weak type accepting PR minus CR. And if the rebel group was actually a strong type, we would see war. And that's exactly what this incentive compatible direct mechanism is replicating. If you announce that you're weak, then you get your payoff of PR minus CR, which is going to happen peacefully, just like it happened previously. And if you're strong, then you fight a war. Again, just like what happened before. And if we think about why this is incentive compatible, if you're the weak type and you lie and you pretend that you're strong, what's going to happen? Well, instead of getting a payoff of PR minus CR, if you tell the game master that you're strong, the game master starts a war and you get your war payoff, which is only PR minus CR. And so you don't have any incentive to lie here because if you lie, you get your exact same payoff as you would had you played the game properly. PR minus CR. Had you told the truth to the game master, you would have received a peaceful settlement of PR minus CR, which would equal your payoff had you fought a war instead. Meanwhile, if you're the strong type and you lie about whether you're weak or you're strong, so you say, hey, game master, I'm actually this weak type, lying to the game master in that manner, the game master would look at what happens in that case. It would think to itself, ah, oh, okay, if you announce that you're the weak type, I give you a payoff of PR minus CR, and that's it for you. And if you're the strong type, if you are lying in that manner, you're actually doing worse than if you told the truth and you had a war started. Because if you started that war, it would be PR prime minus CR as your payoff, which again is greater than PR minus CR. So in this case, we have incentive compatibility. Weak types want to announce that they're weak. Strong types want to announce that they're strong. And this is directly replicating what would have happened had the players played the game. So in that regard, the revelation principle almost seems trivial. You might be thinking to yourself, well, geez, okay, of course we can duplicate the outcome of a game. If we know what the strategic play of the game would be, very obviously we could then figure out what the outcomes of the game are and just duplicate it like that. So what does it matter? Why on earth do we care that a game master can simply simulate a game for us? Well, as it turns out, this part of the revelation principle isn't so important, and it is in many ways trivial, but what is not trivial and what is actually really cool is the contrapositive of this statement. So if you don't know what a contrapositive is, we're going to look at how to take a contraposition in the next lecture, and we're going to then see how the revelation principle's contrapositive actually tells us a heck of a lot about what can happen in terms of war and peace in these crisis negotiations. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.